So uh, once you have the Quartus Prime Light uh, installed uh, and you open it, you will see something like this. So uh, you can always click a new project wizard or you can go to file and select new project wizard from here. But uh, once we do that, uh, your new project wizard starts. So before we get into it, uh, we'll, this video will basically tell you how to create a project, how to add Verilog files to your project, how to uh, set up your simulation environment inside Quartus Prime, and how to simulate your uh, results. And I'll be using our lab one as an example here, but uh, you can use anything you want uh, as, as an example. But uh, once you have that set up, you can uh, go ahead and uh, run various things as you want. So let's jump into it. So once you have this new project wizard window, you can click next uh, and make sure you keep it in directory that you want. Uh, I just want to do it in this directory called test. So once I have that, uh, I will name this project as ECE3700 lab one uh, make sure your top level design name entity is the same thing as the project name uh, it is generally not required with other tools but with this tool it is kind of specific in that regard so make sure you have this name matching uh, the name of your project and also make sure this is the top level module name for your uh, very log that you're going to write in the future part of this uh, uh, assignment so once you have that, uh, click next and click on empty project. Uh, you can add the files required here or you can add them later. So let's just skip this part for now and add those files later. So for that, I'll just click next. Uh, make sure you select uh, the device that we're going to use for this. And for this, we'll basically go to max DA family uh, we'll be using uh, M F M 10 M 50 D A F 484 C C 7 G and uh, you can scroll down and see 10 M 50 D A F 484 C 7 G once you select that uh, click next uh, make sure your simulation environment is models in Altera and your format is very large HDL because that's the thing that we'll be using in 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 this assignment or any assignment for that matter in this course so once we have that uh, you'll go to the summary page uh, and then make sure you check all these things and make sure they are meeting with your uh, requirements once you think they are uh, click finish and you should basically have a new project set up for yourself so once you have uh, this new project set up uh, you can see that there are uh, windows here or panes uh, as Quartus wants to call it. Uh, this is a project navigator pane and this is the tasks pane. In the project navigator pane, you have a certain drop down here which can show the files that are available. We did not add any files yet, so we can't see any of them. And we can see the hierarchy of our design. Uh, so we have, as of now, just a top level module defined. So we just have that. Uh, but we can have multiple levels of hierarchy as per our project as the complexity increases. So let's just add uh, a file or let's just start writing a file inside Quartus and uh, let's see how that works. So click on file uh, and new and once you are in there click on Verilog HDL file uh, and then you should have a new Verilog file available to you here. Uh, so once you have that, uh, you can r r start coding here. Oh, sorry. Uh, for very long, it is two forward slashes. That, that basically gives you the comment. So, so once you have that, you can start coding from here. Uh, but in our case, I have already written the very long files for this lab. So I'll just copy them and paste them. So I have these things available to us uh, and 
My top level module is EC3700 lab 1 that is the same thing as our project name and the la la mod uh, lab and the module we have declared at the beginning of this project and I have a bunch of other modules here that will basically go one over the other to complete uh, the entire assignment. Uh, so once we have these uh, what I'll do is I'll just go to file and save as and I already have this module here but just in case uh, I will save it as .v file uh, so and make sure you have the save type as Verilog HDL and once you have this uh, you can hit save uh, and that should basically save your file uh, so you should have a .v file available to you uh, once you have that uh, you you can edit your Verilog as you want or you can add files here so if you want to add more files into your design you can always go to hierarchy hit files and right click on the files icon you can add or remove files in this project there is one more way to do this uh, and that would be going into uh, the project uh, and you can do add or remove files in this project so as of now uh, we just have our top level module but for simulation we would need a test bench as well so uh, for a test bench it is a good idea to always use the same file name but uh, with a tb underscore at the beginning uh, I have already written a test bench for our uh, file so I'll just select that so this is the test bench I'll just click open uh, that should basically add uh, the file here so once that is done I'll hit on apply and click on ok so once that is done uh, the file is listed here so if we open that uh, we can see that this is the test bench module uh, it is tb underscore ece3700 lab1 this has the top level module that we have declared here instantiated this is very similar to uh, c like calling a function and this is the syntax of uh, attaching each wire to your periphery of this particular module and uot basically means unit under test but you can give it any name that's the name i have given for this module's instantiation and every test bench generally has an initial begin condition so initial begin basically says that your simulation starts from that particular location i have tested for various cases of i is equal to zero i, I zero is equal to zero and i one is equal to zero and so on uh, so what i'm doing here is i'm assigning some values to my internal wires of the test bench and then i'm waiting for 20 time units and then i'm displaying the values of outputs and then I'm doing the same thing again and again for different outputs and inputs and then I'll end my initial begin and I'll end my end uh, overall test module so once that is done uh, I have the test bench as well as the regular file uh, assigned to me or uh, you know assigned in the project so once I have that I want to run the simulation of, of this particular module using this test bench and the way i do it through quarters is go to assignments tab and i make sure that my simulation environment is set up the right way so i go to settings and then in simulation uh, make sure you have very log hdl and time scale to be one picosecond but you can change it uh, as per your requirements uh, depending on what kind of design you are uh, simulating once you have that uh, click on more EDA writer uh, netlist writer settings and make sure you have generate functional netlist turned on what this does is it will basically generate uh, a functional netlist for your design once you perform synthesis and analysis uh, so this is basically an equivalent of what will be implemented on your uh, board so once you have that thing set to on you can uh, hit OK and you are basically done with this particular part of simulation and then this native link what it does is it compiles the test bench internally through quarters for you and to do that click on compile test bench uh, hit test benches you don't have any uh, test benches listed here as of now but you can always add the file you have in the project so click on new 
the test bench name is basically db underscore ece 3700 lab one i'll just use the same name to avoid any confusion and then i'll use run simulation until all vector stimuli, uh, stimuli are used uh, these are the vector stimuli that you see here once they are all used my simulation uh, basically ends and then i'll add the test bench file here that is tb underscore the ec 3700 so once i uh, select that file name here hit add it should basically list the file uh, here so once i have that i click ok i should be able to see uh, my name of the file uh, as well as the top level module the name of the file top level module as well as the name of the test bench i have given once I have that, I'll click OK and then I'll click Apply and OK here. So once that is done, my native link is set up to run that particular test bench on, on my particular design. So once I have that, uh, I'll now have to set up uh, the tool to basically detect uh, that the model sim installation is available to it. So the way I do it is I go to Tools, select Options in there and then go to EDA tool options and make sure that this is basically the location of where you have installed your Quartus, right? For, for me, I have installed uh, Quartus in my D drive, if you remember it correctly. So I have it in Quartus and then inside Quartus, I should be able to see model sim underscore ASC. If I just select that directory, it should automatically uh, select the file it needs at any point in time uh, so you you have to make sure you are in that particular directory so for that go to model sim exe go all the way down and select win32 uh, al oem this should basically have the executable files for you so once you have those uh, that particular location set up you can click ok and you are basically set up uh, to run your simulation. So to run your simulation, you will basically have to go to tools, run simulation tool and click on RTL simulation. But uh, in before you do that, uh, this will basically say that uh, you have set up the uh, native link and you are running the simulation. But uh, before you actually run the simulation, you 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 have to uh, analyze and synthesize your design and uh, the way to do it is to go to your tasks pane select on analysis and synthesis and uh, double click it so once you do that uh, it should basically go through a bunch of processes to analyze your design and then come up with a compilation report that basically says how your design is whether there are any syntax errors or uh, uh, other things that might affect your design in other ways so uh, if you see here uh, for our design uh, there are a bunch of uh, exclamation marks these are the warnings that are uh, uh, generated in our compilation so if we go look at each of these warnings this basically says there is an implicit net warning for this particular location so if you double click it will automatically take you to those values so what this basically is saying is there is a net called AOC uh, that is an implicit net so if you look at line 16 here it has a declaration of wire P and the P is being used here but there is no declaration for AOC it is just a variable that is being directly used in line 21 so what the compiler does is it generates a net for AOC by itself and then it gives you a warning saying oh yeah, there is a net that I have generated by myself so this is a created implicit net warning and most of the times this warning should be fine if you don't want to see these warnings you can uh, declare all of your internal wires as wires separately and then if you go further down uh, we don't have any more errors hopefully yeah we don't have any more errors or warnings all the warnings are implicit uh, nets that should be fine in most of the cases 
and then you end up with this particular uh, line that says analysis and synthesis was successful with zero errors and 18 warnings so once that is done you can go to tools go to run simulation tool and hit rtl simulation so once you hit that uh, the tool will automatically call the model sim from the location you have specified earlier and then this model sim will basically select all the files select all the test benches like you want and perform the sim uh, simulation for you so in our case our top level module was tb underscore ec3700 lab1 and then there was a uut inside it and if you look at all the uh, outputs on this window this is called a transcript window if you look at the outputs here these are the print statements that we have given so for the first uh, particular simulation we have f not to be 1 f1 to be 1 and error to be 0 and that that can be always uh, checked in our waveform so a not a1 b not b1 i not i1 are our inputs f not f1 and error are our outputs i have just made sure that I, I write down all the outputs in the transcript and you can always set the inputs and outputs and make sure your uh, design is working perfectly for uh, this particular case so this should basically conclude uh, your generation of Verilog and simulation it a uh, simulation of it on computer uh, but the next steps would be uh, somewhat important that would basically be uh, writing this particular very log that you have generated onto your devices and we'll look into that in the next video